the plus or minus, which dictates whether you're going to have a positive or negative or a plus or minus in this case. Would you originally feel comfortable doing what we just did? Are you sure? Yeah. Now, the question is, all this stuff works. This is great. It's fantastic. It's something squared equals a number if you take a square root of both sides. But look at this one. Will that work here? Can I take a square root of both sides? Even if I were to subtract 16, subtract 8x, and get the x squared by itself, do you notice I'd have an x on both sides of my... That'd be horrible, because you can't ever isolate that. We need a slightly different way to go about it, or, or we need to change this to look like this. That's what we need to do. We're going to learn how to do that right now. Now, something kind of nice about all three of these, I'll bet you a million dollars I could factor these in less than five seconds for each one of them. You don't, you don't believe me? You're a math teacher. Yeah, of course I am. Know. Plus, I already have been taught this lesson like 18 times, so of course I know how to do that. But do you want to take the bet? No. Even, no. even if I didn't know these ones, would you want to take that bet? No. No, because I know something that you don't know right now. I should know a lot that you don't right know. Just kidding. That was a jerk thing to say. Just kidding. Um, now, what I know is that if this number is the square of half of this number, it makes a perfect square trinomial, and you can factor it very quickly. You could actually do that with a diamond problem, couldn't you? You'd have 8 on the top, 16 on the bottom, that's 4 and 4. You'd have negative 6 on the top, you'd have 9 on the bottom, that's negative 3, negative 3. You'd have, whoa, that's kind of a weird one. We'll talk about that one in a second. But check this out. I know for a fact that if this is what I'm given, x plus 4 squared is what I'm going to get out of it. I know if that's what I'm given, x minus 3 squared is what I'm going to get out of it. I know if that's what I'm given, we're going to do this one together in just a second. I want you to look at the pattern here. There's a relationship between this number and this number, this number and this number, this number and this number. Take this number right here, the middle, middle number, divide it by 2. What do you get? 4. Then square it. Good. Take this number right here, divide it by 2. What do you, no, it's not 3. It's negative 3. Then square it. Square negative 3. What do you get? Okay. Take this number right here. Follow me along. Take this number right here. Divide it by 2. 3 over 2. I want the 3 over 2. You see the 3 over 2? Square it. Right? Now, look at, look, at, look at this. Take this number. Divide it by 2. What do you get? Take this number, divide it by 2, what do you get? Three. Take this number, divide it by 2, what do you get? Three. You with me on 3 over 2, positive? Mm -hmm. That is your factorization. If this number is half this number squared, so basically 4 squared, if this number is half this number squared, if this number is half this number squared, it's called a perfect square trinomial. And if it is, we can factor it just like we did right here. Here's the problem. You're not just going to be given these things. You're going to be given things like this. Now, even were I to get the 1 on the other side, it's not going to be a perfect square trinomial. Because if I did, I'd have x squared plus 8x minus 1 equals 0. Is this number half this number squared? No. No, because we know that's 16. Here's the idea. What we're going to be doing here, here's the second key point for you. The first key point is very easy. You take square root of both sides, you have a plus and minus, that's it. Here's the second key point for the section. Second key point is, we're going to try to make this side a perfect square trinomial. That's the whole idea. So what we're going to be doing, listen carefully, you're going to force, don't you like forcing something? <coughs> Conquer this problem. Ow. You're going to force this side to work like this side. This does. You're going to force this one to be one of these. Here's how you do it. You get everything to one side, all your x terms to one side, and the constant to the other side. We have that right now, yes? 
you look at your x term. You look at your x term. Take half of it. How much is it? Four. Square that. Six. Everyone do this and say it out loud. Take half this number. Four. Four. Square it. This is an equation, right? You're going to add it to both sides. And you're like, why? Why? I don't know. I get it. Why am I doing that? Watch. Watch what happens. If I add it to this side, I get x squared plus 8x plus 16. You follow me? If I add it to this side, I get how much? 17. Now you go, well, why, why do I want 17? I don't care about that side. Miss your question? I don't care about the 16. I want you to look at the 8. Take half of it. How much is that? Now square four. Okay. That's what I'm adding to both sides. Okay. I'm going to write the steps out, in, well, probably next time, but I'll, I'll write explicit steps. I want to preview this right now, though. Okay. So we're we're taking half that number. We're squaring it. We're adding it to both sides because it's an equation. You have to add something to both sides. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That right there, by necessity, would be a perfect square trinomial. And you're going to factor it. A perfect square trinomial will be factored the same way this was. How we factored every one of these is we divided that by 2, and you put it here. So what number, can you tell me what number is going to go there? Where are we getting the 4? Well, look at, look. Where we got the 4 is the same way we got the 16. You divide this number by 2, right? You divide that number by 2. You square it, it gets added. It also goes right there, squared. Hey, does that look familiar? Yeah. That's exactly what we've been doing. Okay, so as soon as you complete the square, you have something we just did. That's why we did this. So you can go, oh, you know what? I take a square root with a plus or minus on both sides. I get x plus 4 equals plus or minus square root of 17. I subtract 4 from both sides. And I get x equals negative 4 plus or minus square root of 17. That's negative 4 plus root 17. That's negative 4 minus root 17. I get my two solutions like I wanted. We're done. How many felt pretty good about what we talked about? Now, we are going to do a whole bunch more examples like this next time. So if you're like, oh my gosh. Well, go back and watch the video. I'll try to post this today. Uh, we'll, we'll be on YouTube today. Um, but go back and watch that. Check out some of those problems. Again, especially that one. And we'll cover this, uh, uh, start on this tomorrow. So we're looking at how to complete a square on a quadratic equation. Of course, what makes an equation quadratic, somebody? The square, yeah. If you have something squared, that means it's a quadratic. And we're learning how to complete a square. In other words, we're learning how to complete a perfect square trinomial so that we can factor it. So in our example, I did this one last time, but I did it very, very fast. And I want to go through the steps and show you exactly what I did in order to solve it. Do you remember that example from last time? Yeah. Hope you do, from yesterday. The first step you're going to do to complete the square is already set up for you in this problem. Here's what you need to do. When you get an equation and you're trying to complete the square, which I will give you explicit directions uh, to do that on your test. I'll say solve this by completing the square. If you solve it by any other means, I'm not going to give you credit for it. I want to see completing the square. The first thing you need to do, get all the x terms on one side, and the constant or the number on the other side. Do you guys see that that's satisfied right here? Yes. X terms on one side, constant on the other side. That's the first step you need to do. So number one, set up the equation so the X terms are on one side and the constant is on the other side. Okay, x terms on one side, constant on the other. We're going to verify that's already done. We've got x's over here. We've got the number over there. That's great. That's what we're looking for. So at least step one is done for us. The next step you're going to do, you're going to make sure that the coefficient, what's the coefficient mean? What's that mean? 
Good, the number in front of the variable. The coefficient of the x squared term. I want you to look up there on the board, find the x squared term, find the coefficient. The coefficient has to be 1. Is the coefficient 1 here? Good. So we're looking right here. If this thing is anything besides a 1, you're going to have to divide it out. Otherwise, this process doesn't work. You with me? So step 1, x terms on one side, constant on the other. Step 2, you're going to make sure the coefficient of the x squared term is 1. If not, you might have to divide. So that's step 2. <coughs> Make sure coefficient of x squared term is 1, divide if necessary. So we look over here, well, our, our x terms are on one side, x squared has a coefficient of 1, so we're set. The first two steps are already done for us, that's great. Now, here's the next and most important step. What you're going to do is you're going to look at the x term. Look at the x term right now, what's the x term? Positive or negative? Positive. Positive. Okay. So we're looking at the x term, you're looking at that coefficient, the positive 8. What you're going to do is take the square of half of that number, not the square root, the square. So you take half that number, what's half that number? <coughs> then you square it, you get, and you're going to add that to both sides. So what I'm going to write down here is add the square of half the x term to both sides. It's an equation, you have to do it to both sides, you can't just do it to one side. I'll be focused up here, are you focused up here? You're going to take half of that, square it, add it to both sides. That's step three. Add the square, not the square root, the square of one half the x term. Of course, I mean the coefficient of the x term. I don't mean including the x. I mean just the x term. So maybe I should actually write that. Okay, so you set up your equation, x terms are on one side. You've got the constant on the other side. You're going to look at the coefficient of the x squared term. You're going to make sure that's 1. That's already done for you. Now's the, the money step. This is where you, you do the problem, actually. You're going to add half, always add, never subtract, always add half the square, I'm sorry, the square of half of the coefficient of the x term on both sides. So you look at your x term, you go, okay, my x term is 8x. The coefficient is positive 8. I take half of that, that is 4, and then I square it. Notice you have to take half of it and then square it. Don't square it and then take half of it. Okay, that'd be 32. We don't want 32. We want your 16. Do you see the 16, how I'm getting that? So you take 8 <coughs> divided by 2 squared. That's what you're doing. 8 divided by 2 squared, that's going to give you 16. And since it's an equation,